Numbers 26 After the plague, the Lord said to Moses and Eleazar the son of Aaron the priest, Take a census of all the congregation of the people of Israel, from twenty years old and upward, by their fathers' houses, all in Israel who are able to go to war. And Moses and Eleazar the priests spoke with them in the plains of Moab by the Jordan at Jericho, saying, Take a census of the people from twenty years old and upward, as the Lord commanded Moses. The people of Israel who came out of the land of Egypt were Reuben the firstborn of Israel, the sons of Reuben, of Hanak, the clan of the Hanakites, of Palu, the clan of the Paluites, of Hezron, the clan of the Hezronites, of Carmi, the clan of the Carmites. These are the clans of the Reubenites, and those listed were 43,730. And the sons of Palu, Eliab. The sons of Eliab, Nemuel, Dathan, and Abiram. These are the Dathan and Abiram chosen from the congregation who contended against Moses and Aaron in the company of Korah, when they contended against the Lord, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up together with Korah. When that company died, when the fire devoured 250 men, and they became a warning, but the sons of Korah did not die. The sons of Simeon, according to their clans, of Nemuel, the clan of the Nemulites, of Jamin, the clan of the Jaminites, of Jachin, the clan of the Jachinites, of Zerah, the clan of the Zerahites, of Shaul, the clan of the Shaulites, these are the clans of the Simeonites, 22,200. The sons of Gad, according to their clans, of Zephon, the clan of the Zephonites of Haggai, the clan of the Haggites of Shunai, the clan of the Shunites of Oznai, the clan of the Oznites of Arai, the clan of the Arites of Arad, the clan of the Aradites of Aralai, the clan of the Aralites. These are the clans of the sons of Gad as they were listed, 40,500. The sons of Judah were Er and Onan, and Er and Onan died in the land of Canaan. And the sons of Judah, according to their clans, were of Shelah, the clan of the Shelanites, of Perez, the clan of the Perizzites, of Zerah, the clan of the Zerahites. And the sons of Perez were of Hezron, the clan of the Hezronites, of Hamal, the clan of the Hamalites. These are the clans of Judah, as they were listed, 76,500. The sons of Issachar, according to their clans, of Tola, the clan of the Tolaites, of Pava, the clan of the Punites, of Jashub, the clan of the Jashubites, of Shimron, the clan of the Shimronites. These are the clans of Issachar, as they were listed, 64,300. The sons of Zebulun, according to their clans, of Sered, the clan of the Seredites, of Elon, the clan of the Elonites, of Jalil, the clan of the Jahlielites. These are the clans of the Zebulonites, as they were listed, 60,500. The sons of Joseph, according to their clans, Manasseh and Ephraim. The sons of Manasseh, of Machir, the clan of the Machirites, and Machir was the father of Gilead, of Gilead, the clan of the Gileadites. These are the sons of Gilead, of Aizer, the clan of the Aizerites, of Helek, the clan of the Helekites, and of Asriel, the clan of the Asrielites, and of Shechem, the clan of the Shechemites, and of Shemida, the clan of the Shemidaites, and of Hefer, the clan of the Heferites. Now, Zelophehad, the son of Hefer, had no sons but daughters. And the names of the daughters of Selephahad were Mala, Noah, Hagla, Milcah, and Tirzah. These are the clans of Manasseh, and those listed were 52,700. These are the sons of Ephraim, according to their clans, of Shethala, the clan of the Shethalites, of Bekar, the clan of the Bekarites, of Tahan, the clan of the Tahanites. And these are the sons of Shethala, of Aaron, the clan of the Aaronites. These are the clans of the sons of Ephraim, as they were listed, 32,500. These are the sons of Joseph, according to their clans. The sons of Benjamin, according to their clans, of Bela, the clan of the Belaites, of Ashbel, the clan of the Ashbelites, of Ahiram, the clan of the Aharamites, of Shephupham, the clan of the Shufamites, of Hufam, the clan of the Hufamites. And the sons of Bela were Ard and Naaman, of Ard, the clan of the Ardites, of Naaman, the clan of the Naamites. These are the sons of Benjamin according to their clans, and those listed were 45,600. These are the sons of Dan according to their clans, of Shuham, the clan of the Shuhamites. These are the clans of Dan according to their clans. All the clans of the Shuhamites, as they were listed, were 64,400. The sons of Asher according to their clans, of Imnah, the clan of the Imnites, of Ishvai, 
the clan of the Ishvites, of Bariah, the clan of the Berites, of the sons of Bariah, of Heber, the clan of the Heberites, of Malkiel, the clan of the Malkielites. And the name of the daughter of Asher was Sarah. These are the clans of the sons of Asher, as they were listed, 53,400. The sons of Naphtali, according to their clans, of Jaziel, the clan of the Jazielites, of Gunai, the clan of the Gunites, of Jazer, the clan of the Jazerites, of Shilem, the clan of the Shilemites. These are the clans of Naphtali, according to their clans, and those listed were 45,400. This was the list of the people of Israel, 601,730. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Among these the land shall be divided for inheritance according to the number of names. To a large tribe you shall give a large inheritance, and to a small tribe you shall give a small inheritance. Every tribe shall be given its inheritance in proportion to its list. But the land shall be divided by lot. According to the names of the tribes of their fathers they shall inherit. Their inheritance shall be divided according to a lot between the larger and the smaller. This was the list of the Levites according to their clans, of Gershon, the clan of the Gershonites, of Kohath, the clan of the Kohathites, of Merari, the clan of the Merites. These are the clans of Levi, the clan of the Lebnites, the clan of the Hebronites, the clan of the Malites, the clan of the Mushites, the clan of the Korahites, and Kohath was the father of Amram. The name of Amram's wife was Jacobed, the daughter of Levi, who was born to Levi in Egypt. And she bore to Amram, Aaron and Moses, and Miriam their sister. And to Aaron were born Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. But Nadab and Abihu died when they offered unauthorized fire before the Lord. And those listed were twenty-three thousand, every male from a month old and upward. But they were not listed among the people of Israel, because there was no inheritance given to them among the people of Israel. These were those listed by Moses and Eleazar the priest who listed the people of Israel in the plains of Moab by the Jordan at Jericho. But among these there was not one of those listed by Moses and Aaron the priest, who had listed the people of Israel in the wilderness of Sinai. For the Lord had said of them, They shall die in the wilderness. Not one of them was left, except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. Psalm 69 Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in deep mire, where there is no foothold. I have come into deep waters, and the flood sweeps over me. I am weary with my crying out, my throat is parched, my eyes grow dim with waiting for my God. More in number than the hairs of my head are those who hate me without cause. Mighty are those who would destroy me, those who attack me with lies. What I did not steal must I now restore? O oh God, you know my folly, the wrongs I have done are not hidden from you. Let not those who hope in you be put to shame through me, O Lord, God of hosts. Let not those who seek you be brought to dishonor through me, O God of Israel. For it is for your sake that I have borne reproach, that dishonor has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my brothers, an alien to my mother's sons. The zeal for your house has consumed me and the reproaches of those who reproach you have fallen on me. When I wept and humbled my soul with fasting, it became my reproach. When I made sackcloth my clothing, I became a byword to them. I am the talk of those who sit in the gate, and the drunkards make songs about me. But as for me, my prayer is to you, O Lord. At an acceptable time, O God, in the abundance of your steadfast love, answer me in your saving faithfulness. Deliver me from sinking in the mire. Let me be delivered from my enemies and from the deep waters. Let not the flood sweep over me, or the deep swallow me up, or the pit close its mouth over me. Answer me, O Lord, for your steadfast love is good. According to your abundant mercy, turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant, for I am in distress. Make haste to answer me. Draw near to my soul. Redeem me, ransom me because of my enemies. You know my reproach and my shame and my dishonor. My foes are all known to you. Reproaches have broken my heart so that I am in despair. I looked for pity, but there was none, and for comforters, but I found none. They gave me poison for food, and for my thirst they gave me sour wine to drink. 
Let their own table before them become a snare, and when they are at peace, let it become a trap. Let their eyes be darkened so that they cannot see, and make their loins tremble continually. Pour out your indignation upon them, and let your burning anger overtake them. May their camp be a desolation, let no one dwell in their tents. For they persecute him whom you have struck down, and they recount the pain of those you have wounded. Add to them punishment upon punishment, may they have no acquittal from you. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living, let them not be enrolled among the righteous. But I am afflicted and in pain. Let your salvation, O God, set me on high. I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. This will please the Lord more than an ox, or a bull with horns and hoofs. When the humble see it, they will be glad. You who seek God, let your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the needy, and does not despise his own people who are prisoners. Let heaven and earth praise him, the seas, and everything that moves in them. For God will save Zion and build up the cities of Judah, and people shall dwell there and possess it. The offspring of his servants shall inherit it, and those who love his name shall dwell in it. Isaiah 16 Send the Lamb to the ruler of the land, from Selah, by way of the desert, to the mount of the daughter of Zion. Like fleeing birds, like a scattered nest, so are the daughters of Moab at the fords of Arnon. Give counsel, grant justice, make your shade like night. At the height of noon, shelter the outcasts, do not reveal the fugitive. Let the outcasts of Moab sojourn among you, be a shelter to them from the destroyer. When the oppressor is no more, and destruction has ceased, and he who tramples underfoot has vanished from the land, then a throne will be established in steadfast love, and on it will sit in faithfulness in the tent of David, one who judges and seeks justice, and is swift to do righteousness. We have heard of the pride of Moab, how proud he is, of his arrogance, his pride, and his insolence. In his idle boasting, he is not right. Therefore, let Moab wail for Moab, let everyone wail, mourn, utterly stricken, for the raisin cakes of Kir Hareseth, for the fields of Heshbon languish and the vine of Sibma, the lords of the nations have struck down its branches, which reached to Jazer and strayed to the desert. Its shoots spread abroad and passed over the sea. Therefore I weep with the weeping of Jazer for the vine of Sibma. I drench you with my tears, O Heshbon and Leela. For over your summer fruit and your harvest the shout has ceased, and joy and gladness are taken away from the fruitful field, and in the vineyards no songs are sung, no cheers are raised, no treader treads out wine in the presses. I have put an end to the shouting, therefore my inner parts moan like a lyre for Moab, and my inmost self for Kir Hareseth. And when Moab presents himself, when he wearies himself on the high place, when he comes to his sanctuary to pray, he will not prevail. This is the word that the Lord spoke concerning Moab in the past. But now the Lord has spoken, saying, In three years, like the years of a hired worker, the glory of Moab will be brought into contempt. In spite of all his great multitude, and those who remain will be very few and feeble. 1 Peter 4 since therefore Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves with the same way of thinking. For whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, so as to live for the rest of the time in the flesh no longer for human passions, but for the will of God. The time that is past suffices for doing what the Gentiles want to do, living in sensuality, passions, drunkenness, orgies, drinking parties, and lawless idolatry. With respect to this, they are surprised when you do not join them in the same flood of debauchery, and they malign you. But they will give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is why the gospel was preached even to those who are dead, that though judged in the flesh the way people are, they might live in the spirit the way God does. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. Above all, Keep loving one another earnestly, 
since love covers a multitude of sins. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling, as each has received a gift. Use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to Him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when His glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the Spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or an evildoer or as a meddler. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. For it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God, and if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Therefore let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful Creator while doing good.